for your really, really thankful this morning. I trust you know by now the essence of why we're here today. Every song had a message. Praise. Thanks. Stand. All those things work together to help us out as we do what is I call thankful living. Amen? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful for all the things that you've done. As we take time to pause and reflect, it's like the old folks used to say, we don't know why you did it. <laughs> But we're so glad you did. Bless us now as we're going to your word, Father. Open our hearts and our minds so as we see ourselves on this journey, on our thankful living journey, let the Holy Spirit dwell within us, Father. Open our hearts and minds. Bless us now. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture for today is Psalms 103. 17, 17 through 22. I People were worried about me a few minutes ago. I started getting texts. Where you at? Where you at? You ain't here. Where you at? I had the honor of taking a group of young men that we mentor down to the Harvest Hope Food Bank this morning. And um, they were making boxes and filling boxes and and I just stopped and pulled them to the side for a minute and I said, do you realize what you're doing? And they said, eh, we're filling boxes. I said, no, you're providing a service. The things that you're doing right now, nobody, the people who will receive this will never see. But God sees. The things that we do for people in most, in most cases, they will never know. God knows. So as we look at thankful living, we got to understand not what we do, but who we do it for. Amen. Let us go to the scripture, uh, Psalms 103, 17 through 22. And it starts out with verse 17. It says, but the mercy of the Lord. Are you with me this morning? It's from what? To everlasting. To everlasting. I don't know how long from everlasting to everlasting is, but I'm glad he has that mercy, amen? Upon him, upon them that fear him. And that doesn't mean being scared. That just means respect and all. And, right, and his righteousness unto his children's children, to such that keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments, and not just remember the commandments, what's those last three little words? To do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and he, and he and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that is sell his strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, Oh, my soul. It's not so much what we're thankful for as we look at Thanksgiving and all that. But it's who we're thankful to, amen? Because we seem to get caught up in the, in the haves and the have-nots. That syndrome. Some of us, we live in a world that we're haves. Measured by society, we, 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 live in, we live in houses and stuff. We have nice salaries, choices, and lifestyles that reflect a bit of affluence in this life. And for the record, having things is not a sin, amen? But to whom much is given, much is required. Others of us, as measured by society, may not have the salaries and the choices and the lifestyles that reflect a bit of affluence in this life, but in the eyes of God, guess what? He loves us all the same. 
Jeremiah says, I've loved thee. He didn't say which thee. He didn't say rich thee or poor thee or black thee or white thee or Republican thee or Democratic thee. Come on. He says, I've loved thee with everlasting love. He loves us all the same. Amen. But the question is today, do we love each other? Yes, we do things. But I fear sometimes we do things out of obligation and not out of love. I'm going to do this because it's the right thing to do. Not because God has given me the ability to do it. Amen. Because a lot of times we look for praise for the things that we do. Come on. You want somebody to see you doing what you do. You want somebody to know that you did what you did. But true praise is our response to the love God has for us, amen? That is the only thing that praise is. Praise is not getting up here and playing music. That's not praise. Now, it might be the result of your experience or your relationship with Christ. I'm not going to deny that. But in and of itself, just playing music and singing, that ain't praise. Because when we praise, we have to have a source that we can depend on, amen? If you're praising a rock or a car or a house or a kid, when trouble comes, what is that going to do for you? You need something that's going to get you past the songs, amen? The songs are good. But when you're laying on that bed looking up at the ceiling with pain going all through you, a song could only do so much. But when I call on the name of Jesus, and I've been there. Some of you have been there too. When you call in the name of Jesus, there's a change in you because he is the healer. Songs can soothe, don't get me wrong. And songs can point out good things, don't get me wrong. But a song in itself cannot save us. So we need to look to the source today, amen? I know we're getting caught up in the holidays. And I know we're getting caught up at Christmas and all that stuff. Is, and people are going to start defining themselves about what they can give or what they can't give or, or all these other things that don't mean, in the big scheme of things, a hill of beans. Because we have to understand that in order to be a blessing, we have to have a source that is the fruit of all the blessings. Amen? God is that source. He will give us the right thing to give the people at the right times, amen? As I said, I was at the food kitchen this morning, and I was talking to the gentleman. He was showing us all the things that were going on, and he told me a little story about last week. He said that Monday, they could not, they had a limited staff, so they couldn't, they couldn't do their food pantry like they normally do. Tuesday, they had an emergency. People were coming. In two hours, they gave out 600 packets of food to people that were hungry. Now the problem is we give and we give and we give the, the food and we give the money and we all this other stuff, but the problem is still there. We still have homeless people. We still have hungry people. We're cutting the leaves and we're pruning the tree, but we're not dealing with the source. We need to be helpful, yes. but. We need to be in a position where we can help people get to a better place. Not just keep them in the place that they're at. Yes, Jesus said you're always going to have the poor. But that don't mean that we always have to have treat them in a, in, a, in a different class or a different manner. Amen. Because remember, I just said he loves us all the same. Does he not? Why can't we love each other the same way? We have to have a source to deal with. We have to know who God is. Go to Hebrews eleven six 6 with me for a second. People talk about having faith and people talk about loving Christ and people talk about praising. But guess what? Hebrews eleven six 6 simply tells us, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. We have a lot of situations that don't believe that God is who he is. Oh, he's okay to praise the dance and all this other stuff when we do that, but when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, when it comes down to the, the needs of others and our needs, who do we pray to? What do we pray for? 
We have a God that according to this scripture, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So are we seeking him today in our, in our thankful living? Some of us think that things just come to us out of the blue. We work for it. We deserve it. Not so. Yes, God reigns on the just and the unjust. But when God blesses us to be a blessing to others, we better appreciate it. We see that thankful living requires, no matter what our pocketbook is or our pedigree, we got to learn to look past the superficial and deal with the reality of the Christian experience. And that is, in order to get to heaven, we all got to become a part of the same class. Amen? That class is a sinner saved by grace. There is no other way in. A sinner saved by grace. How are we saved? By grace. Through faith. In who? In your dollars? In your pocketbook? Only Christ can save us. Amen? And it's a status of sinners saved by grace that we, should, that we should use to fuel our existence as we move on in this life. Amen? We should understand that grace is free, but not cheap. We should understand that God's mercy is great and new every day, but it's also a condition of continued faith with him. Amen? Go with me now. God's mercy, God, today God's mercy is above. Because if you look in the, in the book of Revelation, it, it talks about all these different things. We'll get there in a second. Keeping God's mercy is a buffer, keeping many other things that befall us limited in his effects on us. You ever had a wreck that they said could have been worse? You ever had a disease where they said could have been worse? You ever had a situation they said that could have been worse? That's God stepping in and intervening on your behalf. Sometimes whether you deserve it, which we never do, or not. He's blessing us sometimes in spite of ourselves. He's not trying just to reach us. He's trying to reach our families. He's trying to reach our neighbors. He's trying to reach our church people because all of us sitting here today, although we look good and smell good, guess what? On the inside, we're not good. And that's not an indictment. That's just truth, amen? But the Bible does speak about a time where God's wrath will not be mingled with mercy, and those who live ungodly will experience the full wrath of God. If we look in the book of Revelation 14, 10, and this is right after the three angels' messages where we're supposed to be preaching, amen? It tells us of a situation, and it says that, but for those who honor God and respond to his love, and especially to his son's sacrifice, we're going to be okay. But for those who take the mark of the beast, the wrath is going to be poured out without mercy. Can you imagine wrath without mercy coming from God? Put it this way. You touch a stove, right? And the stove is hot. You burn your hand. And I was, well, let's just say that's, that's mercy right there. Because if, if it wasn't mercy in that, you would keep putting your hand there till the hand burns off. That's the best analogy I can make. He's stepping in to make sure we're in a position to keep on making choices for him, amen? And that's all God is doing. He's keep giving us opportunities to come to him. Amen? He keeps wooing us and wooing us and wooing us. You say, well, I'm not worthy. He says, you are worthy. You say, I'm not. He says, you're something. Who's going to win? When are we going to give up the fight and learn that he's the best thing for us? Amen? How are you going to walk? And have a life of thankfulness if you don't believe in the God who gives that, gives that mercy or gives that faith or gives that grace. How are we going to do that? A lot of us are walking blind because we think we're doing something when we're really doing nothing. We think we're a part of something when we're really not. Or we're under grace. But guess what? You can't be under grace unless you deal with the law. You don't want to deal with the law. You ain't under grace. Because you turn away from the Lord. Amen. It's a, tough, it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but, you know, the best thing we could do on this, on this thankful, this walk of living that we're trying to do is to help others do the same thing, amen? We're not, we're not perfect, but iron sharp is iron, and as we talk about Christ, he says talk about him in the going out and coming in, amen? Scripture does say that. 
But if we're doing the things that we should do for the cause of Christ, one, it gives us a greater relationship with him, and it also makes us a more effective witness as we talk to others. Amen? So we see now that thankful living is an intentional commitment to Christ. Amen? You got to get up every morning and recommit yourself. You just can't live on the, the decision that you made when you're 18 years old. Amen? If his merchants are new every day, our commitment has to be new every day too. Amen? We don't get to take a day off because the devil is not taking a day off. Amen? He's not taking a day off on you. Matter of fact, he wants you to take a day off. That's what he gets you. All he's looking for is a crack in the armor. Then he will exploit that. Amen? We have a lot of Christians that are in trouble because they think that they're in a situation where they're saved no matter what they do. If you follow in the Sabbath school lesson, any, you find out that's not the case. Amen? You'll find out that we don't live forever. You'll find out that we need, a, we need a Savior to come get us. You'll find out that we need to commit ourselves to that Savior. You'll find that when we commit ourselves to him, he'll commit himself to us. Amen? I was looking at, the, when I was listening to the Great Controversy, chapter 4 this week. And it was talking about the wall of I'm I can read, but I do like to listen while I'm working and listen while I'm driving. And it began to talk about all of the things that the Waldensians had to go through. Now, understand, they were walking a thankful, they were living a thankful life. But because they were, they were persecuted. So being thankful all the time isn't going to be a cakewalk, amen? People are not going to like you for what, for what you believe. They're not going to like you for what you do. The Waldensians, they had to move from a country to another country because they were persecuted. Not only that, they were in the mountains up in the caves, but guess what God did? If you, if you listen to it, the ground around them that was, was, um, was, was, was rocky and the ground around them that, that couldn't be used, he allowed them to be able to cultivate that so they could grow food and sustain themselves so they could keep going. So any, anytime we, we, we think we got it made, we have to understand that there's still a devil out there that's not wanting you to walk a, a walk of faith. He's not wanting you to be thankful. He's not wanting you to, to believe in something other than him. We have to understand that there's always a negative power at work. Now, should we worry about that power? Not necessarily. But that's where faith comes in. But Jesus said something, too. He said, where sin abounds. Grace. Come on now. Much more abounds. So we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. We have protection. But if we're truly living a life pleasing to Christ, he will show us those things. But living a life pleasing to Christ doesn't mean that it's a cakewalk. Amen? We get to a place where sometimes we get a little bit lackadaisical. But if you don't stay on guard, who, how many people have been in the Army? Been in the Army? What is the one thing that we always got to be ready? We got to be ready, right? So we train. And, and when circumstances come, we have to be ready. And when something happens... You know exactly what to do, Chatty, because you uh, because you you um, you practice and you and you went through the maneuvers. A lot of times we don't know exactly what to do because we've talked a good game and we got sat around here with with, with each other and talked a good game, but when it really comes down, when the rubber hits the road, we don't know what to do. Amen. Unfortunately, we get scared. Knees start knocking. And, and I'm not laughing. I mean, I just know what happens when we get afraid. Because if you look in the Bible, we get afraid when angels show up. I can imagine what we'll do when the devil shows up. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying we have to look at these things. Because we're not ready for some of the shocks that are about to come to us. You think politics and stuff are crazy now? You wait. You think each other is crazy now? You wait. The Bible doesn't say anything about anything getting any better. Before Jesus comes, amen? Progressively, worse, worse and worse. But we still have to have to figure out a way to live a life thankful to Christ, meaningful to Christ. So when he comes back and we're looking for that blessed hope, amen? That's what we're looking for, amen? That we'll be able to go. And not only that, be able to tell others about his benefits and his goodness, amen? 
We have to be able to just hold on just a little while longer. Yes. This thing is, is deeper than we thought it would be. Yes. It's kind of hard to be happy in, in the midst of all of the circumstances that are going on. And I'm not a doomsdayer, but I'm just a realist. You can't look around and see all this food going on and, and, and just be happy all the time. It will have an effect on you. It doesn't have to have a constant effect. It doesn't have to have a, a long-term effect. But if it doesn't affect you, then you're, you're not even thinking about the people of God. We're supposed to love each other. Things that happen to you, I'm supposed to worry about. Things that happen to me, you're supposed to worry about. But we are all supposed to take them to the Lord in prayer, amen? Don't walk around with it like a weight. And please don't pick up the phone and start telling everybody else about it, amen? We need to learn how to live for Christ despite of what's going on, amen? Back to the Waldensians. They were, up in the, they were up in the mountains. They were being persecuted by the Catholic Church. They had got killed in a lot of cases. They kept going, but they did not stop what they did. They taught their children what to do. They, 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 they got suits out, and they, and they start sewing little pockets in there, and they start putting scriptures and stuff in the, in the suits. And as they went to people and as they talked to people, they start sharing the word of God. They did not let the, 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 the cruel things that were coming upon them in their thankful living affect them so much that they could not share the word of God. How is it with you today? How is it with me today? I see some Facebook pages. I look at all this other stuff. Are we really using what we have to benefit the cause of Christ? When's the last time you actually just stopped and thanked God just for life? I'm not talking about all these other things you have and don't have. It's always going to be that. If we can compare ourselves by ourselves, we're always going to be in that situation. And it, it amazes me when somebody comes to me and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. How do you figure you're any highly favored in me? If he loves all of us with an everlasting love, what gets you somewhere I can't be? We got to get away from all these hierarchies. We got to get away from all these thinking that we're better than somebody else. And there's some of those that are highly about being highly favored, not even keeping the commandments. You got preachers preaching everything but commandments. But yet what people see them, they want to be a part of that situation because they like what they see. Because they're looking for everything else but the truth. It is the truth that's going to save us, amen. Bible says we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna die because we didn't know the truth. We're gonna perish because we didn't love the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus Christ. Amen. You might think that giving and giving is a part of uh, uh, of, of the thankful living, but the giving of tithes and offerings and all that stuff is important. But God is requiring a little bit more. Go with me. Go with me to Matthew 20, 23, 23, and I'm going to read it for you. The, the, the Pharisees were standing out there on the corner, and, 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 and they were talking about the things that they did. And Jesus came by, and Jesus always has a real, real hard opinion of the church. At them, but because they're not doing what they're supposed to do, they have the opportunity to influence people, and they're not. Amen? He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of men and anis and come and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ye ought to have done, and not to leave the other one undone. Yes, returning to God is a good thing. But if we're not returning to him in the way he wants us to return, what's the point of doing it? He wants us to give of ourselves, amen? Micah 6, 6 through 8. And then we got to Call it a day, amen? Micah 6, 6 through 8. If you know anything about the book of Micah, Micah was, was, was having to deliver a message to the Israelites. And they were doing all these things they shouldn't do. And it was one of those times where, you know, Israel was one place and God was another. You know, every time it seemed like they lost leadership or every time they didn't have strong leadership, they started to do what they wanted to do. And any time we're left to our own devices, there's always trouble, amen? Always trouble. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need to stay connected to Jesus because left to our own devices, 
left to our own thoughts, left to our own mindsets. We are dangerous. Scripture says that the heart is wicked. Who can know it? The scripture also goes up to say that God knows it, amen? So when you say God knows my heart, yes, he does. He knows that it's wicked. And he knows that if you don't stay in contact with him, you're going to have trouble, amen? So let's go on down. So God is talking to Micah, and, and Micah is talking to God. And, you know, it's a hard being one of these uh, prophets because they got to live it. They got to do it for the hard message, amen? And he's told them what's going to happen. And now we get down to Micah 6, verse 6. Now, God is lamenting, and he's talking to the children of Israel. He's saying, now, with what shall I, and I he was one of them, he said, now what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Or will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With 10,000 rivers of olive oil, shall I offer my firstborn? Now, right here, we're showing that they were being influenced by pagan nations because God never asked for a human sacrifice. Amen? But this was showing that they were already influenced. God knew that, but he was letting them know that he knew what they knew. Amen? He said, shall I offer my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? But now here comes the reality of the thing. Verse 8. He says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you except to act justly and to love and walk humbly before your God. Amen. So faithful living is our response to God's goodness toward us. It's the hope of glory that we have. Amen. Grounded in the assurity of salvation Christ purchased for us on the cross. Remember, it's free, but not cheap. And it's for our benefit, but for his glory, amen. So as we were praying, we were listening to the songs of praise and, and we're listening to the poems today, it was all getting us in a mindset of we should be thankful. But it also should be getting us in a mindset of who we should be thankful to. We should be thankful to God for what he's given us. But we shall be thankful for God, even if he didn't give us nothing. He's still God, amen? He doesn't have to do anything. He's still God with all power, amen? We tend to forget that. We act like if he's not doing something for us, he's not doing nothing. But some kind of way, the sun keeps rising, amen? The wind keeps blowing, amen? Some kind of way, your eyes and my eyes keep opening, amen? Not because of we deserve it, but it's because of his mercy. Time is coming, and we're going to have to make decisions about who we really going to serve. Elijah was up on the mountain, and, and he was looking down at the people, and he told them, look, you got to make a choice. Choose thee this day who you're going to serve. And he ended up being by himself for a minute, didn't he not? It was a challenge. But sometimes walking that life, that thankful living life, we're going to be out there by ourselves. We're not going to have anybody but Christ to save us, amen? Right now, as you're focusing on the things that are going on around you, take a moment, and this is the appeal, simple as that. Take a moment to think about what God really means to you. Is he your savior? Or is he Santa Claus? Is he your savior? Or is he just something you say when you want to look big in front of your friends? Is he your savior? Are you depending on him to be here? Are you depending on him to save you in the end? Your re the reality of this thing, you have to start now because you're going to keep hearing message after message after message saying, come now, come now, come now. Because in, 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 as we look at the three angels' message, he's telling them to come out of her, but we're some of the ones that need to come out too. We need to get our minds focused back on Christ. Nothing wrong with having nice things, amen? Nothing wrong with God to praise for those things, amen? But we have to remember that he who gave them to us is merciful to all of us. He wants us all to be.
when you really stop and think about it. If eyes have not seen or ears heard the wonderful things he has for his people, why are we down here worried about Mercedes and, and, and Cadillacs? And I have a Cadillac. It's a nice car, but it, it can go. It can go. Me and my wife, when we moved into our house, if one of the first things we said, well, it could go. It's not gonna, it's not gonna affect our relationship with Christ, amen. Matter of fact, the Bible says it's all gonna burn anyway. So we need to focus on what's really important. God, if we allow him to, will, will keep us focused, thankful living, even in a world of chaos. That's where the peace that surpasses all understanding comes in. Folks ain't gonna understand why you stay committed. They're not going to understand why everybody else left the church but you. But you know. And as Sister Clark says, when you know, and you know, then you know. Amen. Have a happy Sabbath.